almost forgot to take the carbon brake spring off because sometimes they don't come with that. Yeah, you might want to keep that. So, I just pulled spring, so parking brake return spring. Some some assemblies come with one, some assemblies don't, so keep it. <laughs> yes. If it's good, keep it. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you got to tighten to loosen. Sometimes you got to loosen to loosen. Uh, I'm taking the, yeah. the plug, too, because same thing. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them. And it still cooks the brake caliper again and screws up this brake. <clears throat> then we're looking at ABS module or brake distribution mm -hmm. block. At which point I'm bypassing, getting rid of the ABS, and I'm going to put racing brakes on it. Racing brakes. Because if I got to do all that, I'd rather spend if, spend that money putting real brakes on this thing instead of refixing the undersized brakes it came with. It should be a 9mm, which of course is missing, like the 16mm. Deep well 9mm socket. Because only GM uses these sizes, GM and G. And they, so you never get them in sets. Well, I shouldn't say just Jeep, Deep Fiat. Because I ran into it a lot on the friggin' Renegade. Now it's Nope, not a 9. Nope. Tell me the 10 it's a 10. It just doesn't like that 10. Deep well socket. It's just not liking that 10 millimeter wrench. This portion of the video is brought to you by part hunting. Thank you. Tool hunting. Having to keep parts because you never know whether you're getting them or not anymore. Things you never worried about. First started working on cars 20 years ago. They always had these things with them. Now back you never know. Back in my day. We said back in my day. <laughs> Alrighty, what are you doing here? I uh, just I pulled the release plug and pulled the spring and bolt and keeping all those off of this because they don't, as I said, they don't always come with them on the new rebuilds. So you never know what you're going to get anymore. So it's better to pull it and then not need it. And yep. Instead of need it, and guess what? Now it's halfway back to China to be rebuilt and sold to some other sucker. Mm hmm. Which, if they do a proper rebuild, those parts should be replaced anyways. They should not be reused. Because if the if the part has lived through its life cycle, those parts should be well beyond their life. Now, if you have one like this, it only makes it, you know, 3,000 miles, then those parts aren't that bad. Yeah. All in all, I'm making the effort of old, making old things work better. And the clips, normally you don't need those. I just don't want them rattling around. Those should come with the pads, and I think they were in with the pads. But I guess like everything else, I better keep them just to be safe. I can always toss them later because they don't want them back. Well, at least I can exchange this thing. Hopefully they have something up there to exchange it with. Oh, that's welded shut. Well, they'll have to order one, because they special ordered it and they sent the wrong thing. That piston, though, is welded all the way. You see the piston's all the way extended? Mm -hmm. And it has welded that way. It will not move. It heat, it got a little hot. Yeah. Thanks to a uh, soft line? Maybe soft line. Well, soft line now, anyways. It's possible this was bad to start with, and it just finished off the old soft line. Yeah. Now, Mike? Okay, there we go. Yes, now we have Mike. Oh, so we had a silent film going for a while there. We did. I'm not a paid camera guy, so you get what you pay for. Well, I'll have to talk to the producer about that. <laughs> Funny. As I was saying earlier, if the, if the uh, editor will do a side-by-side -side comparison of new brake versus old brake you'll see it's the same and this one did come with the parking brake spring and i'm just calling that a nipple it's, it's a bleed valve. a bleed valve okay that's a better word for it 
Or one YouTube likes versus one YouTube doesn't. Yeah. All right. And uh, I kept the spring and bleed valve from the other one because I have gotten a uh, caliper that did not have them before. Yeah, and if you're in a situation where it's got to work now, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Something moved. That's good. <clears throat> no, it's just me stripping off the thing. That's bad. It's, this has a head. You're supposed to loosen it from this side, and this just holds in place. Well, that's soft, so it won't move. I'm mm -hmm. just chewing it up. Got something moved. One way or the other, it moved. I heard it. <clears throat> what moved, how, where, and when? So the big question is, is this one of those cases where you're going to push in to pull out? Or just one of those cases where I need more room for movement. Because that sway bar is in the way. Flyers back off. <sighs> Did you actually get it? Yeah, can you hand me a real pair of pliers? Not needle nose, normal pliers. Because I doubt 12 millimeters is going to fit this thing anymore. Right? Once upon a time, it was 12 millimeter. <laughs> what is it now? Probably about 11 and a half by 13. A millimeter? <laughs> yep. I don't think they make a wrench for that. No. Nope. <laughs> the the parts that got flyered are a little under 12, and the, the ends that got flattened out are over 12, mm. so I'm trying to grab what's left of the good ones. And I can see why the Napa person, when I went and bought the Lowe's, said, well, I had fun with that, when I said I was going to do this myself. Yeah. <laughs> Always real reassuring when your parts guy says, or parts person, I should say, it was a little bit, uh, says, oh, have fun with that. <laughs> That's not a good sign. What's the worst sign is when the mechanic gives you the sign of the cross as soon as you buy the parts. That's a worse sign. Oh, yeah. Especially if they start speaking Latin. <laughs> uh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. And it is off. Oh, show the camera, of course, of course. Show, show Mr. the camera. There you go. That end is what gave us some blankety blanket trouble. Because it's been connected for 25, no, 35 years. So, 25 years, yeah. I was going to say 35, this ended in 1985. 25. Car. <laughs> it's a 94 car. Uh -oh. And there's the, the brake in it. The, where it's not broken, it's not leaking, but it's not holding shape, so it's collapsing and trapping fluid. Mm -hmm. And locked the brake up, and then it got overheated, and that fried the cylinder fully deployed. So that was interesting. Which, if you remember a previous video, fluid is what makes purses on the brake pads and make it go stoppy stoppy. And let me stop leaning against that so the car does not collapse, elapsy. Well, most time may stop. You have air brakes too, and then you always have the mechanical brakes. That's what parking the emergency brake is while on old cars like this. New cars have electrical emergency brakes, which doesn't give me a warm fuzzy, really. 
No, it doesn't. They're nice for parking brakes, but as far as the fact that they're also supposed to be your emergency brake, I've had the electronics fail on many a vehicle. <laughs> Couldn't catch fire while they're driving it. <laughs> so... If you have a Chrysler and it has an electronic parking brake, be afraid. Yeah, I... Be very afraid. Yeah. Let's see if I can make this. Now, see... This one has what this is supposed to have. Okay, the camera. Come here. Okay. Right. As I said, this, instead of having that like it's supposed to, where you can cut the hose and put a socket on it, it has a round thing with two flat ends. And those flat ends don't have enough purchase. You see, though, I got a wrench on it and it chewed it off because it had almost no end to it. So, they probably have a special tool for these, or did, in the 90s. This has a capture ring, which it doesn't need to be a capture ring, but it works. Same as the capture ring here. Goes in, clip. Hopefully it doesn't give me trouble because it's a little taller. But it's supposed to be the right one. And it's stainless instead of brass, which... Eh... Why would that make a difference? Uh, brass is inert. Technically, the stainless having steel ends on something that's flammable is uh, increases your chance of a fire hazard. Okay. Also, they're more prone to corrosion, so brass would be better, but I could not get brass. Right. I tried to get brass. I spent six months trying to get brass. I gave up on getting brass. Got you. So using plumber's tape on it? Yep, it's inert. Teflon is an inert substance and it will make a good seal. I probably, since this is a pressure seal, I probably don't need to do that. But I'm just getting it and going to have it down here just in case it doesn't make a seal. Yeah. Because that's not really where the seal is supposed to be on this style of fixture. It should be on the inside of this line. But this is steel instead of brass, so I'm going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of Teflon on the end of that thread. It'll also help keep it from uh, seizing itself shut again, hopefully. So you're going to give it a little bit of Teflon love. Mm -hmm. If that's not a song, it should be. Somebody, quick, make that a song. Teflon love. I'm going to patent it. Make a million dollars. Oh, and also when you get this and you get brake fluid everywhere. Make sure you go wash your car. Give it a good underwash afterwards because brake fluid is corrosive. Is it flammable? It's flammable and corrosive. Flammable. All right, let's just pull this back as far as I can. Put that there so it quits dripping on me, maybe for a moment. I just love the fact that one of our neighbors is actually a blacksmith. That is great. No, oh, I'm waiting. I'm sure you've probably gotten horse and buggy in the shots already. Yeah, I just never comment on them. I swear we're not in the 18th century. We weren't um, time travelers. Although we do feel like some days we're in the 18th century. I don't own a DeLorean yet. Although the Kia is probably as slow. Yes. Well, the Kia can get up to 88 miles an hour. Yeah. Eventually. You can get all the way to 90. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Downhill, Downhill with a tailwind. Yeah. Well, at least it's supposed to be able to make it to 90. That's where it's supposed to be governed. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what I didn't do? I should have. What? Taken this over and picked a wrench. Let's see if I guessed right. I probably didn't. I know it's not 12 millimeter, because the other side's 12 millimeter. What did I bring over here besides 12 millimeter? I brought an 18. That was it. I know, I know the perfect wrench. I know it. It's not an 18. For, for any handy occasion. There you go. Perfect wrench. Too small. <laughs> it's too small. Uh, hand oh, me a, a 17 thing. millimeter. I love this little baby thing. 
I actually had to use it before. That's the sad thing. <laughs> on who? On what? Mickey Mouse's car? On a Jeep. There's the only thing it would get in and fix a wiring connection. Oh, Lord. You said it was standard 5 8 Yep, it's a 5 8 And I still have the kind of a 12 millimeter still. And if anyone ever goes back to do this again, they're going to hate the person that did this work. Well, the way these uh, brake calipers keep dying on you, it's going to be you. I know it. I am going to say that'd be who it would be. It'll that be was, you next year this time. I managed. That was the other thing I did. These were made in China. The ones made in Mexico are known for being prone to exploding and collapsing. So I got the others. And like I said, none of them were brass. By the way... I have to keep up tradition. Impact drill. Impact drill? Yes. Impact drill. Impact drill. Okay. And you're supposed to say? If I had one. Yes. There we go. That's right. Now I just got to get it back in the hole. Sledgehammer. All right, good talk. I'm concentrating. Is that what I smell? Yeah. Okay, so it's got to be that way. Even though it's going to be a little aggravating, that'll work. Okay, I don't have a choice. <laughs> but you got it out anyway. Is that a front seat or a back seat? It's a back seat. Right. We should get a seat belt to replace it with, so. Yeah, it's just the one behind the driver. It's my car. No one fits back there anyways unless they're amputated. And you realize there's no requirement to replace a seatbelt on your own car as long as you're not using it for passengers. I'm not sure that's the thing. Because you can modify, on work trucks, sometimes you have to modify vehicles. And you don't even actually have a seat there anymore. Let's see. I know this state doesn't have any law on it anyways. I'm not going to count New Jersey or California. That's, yes. Highly recommended if you do have to remove a seatbelt, you put a seatbelt in its place. A working one. We're not talking about an electrical cord or a rope that you stole off somewhere. An actual seatbelt. Don't laugh. I've seen both of those things used before as seatbelts. Cargo straps work, right? <laughs> You know, if I nudge this car just enough, it'll come off those jack stands. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to get someone else to your show. You know the guy over there. <laughs> ha. Okay. It seems tight. As tight as I could get it. I can't tell if it leaks until the brake fluid is all coming out the line, which is a good sign. Now i got to get the caliper on so I can connect it and then see if it leaks. <laughs> and then bleed the air out of the line. Yeah. yeah, all the fun stuff. And then take us for a spin so we can see how the brakes work. That'll be my magic time tomorrow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You probably want to move the camera again. I'm going to be sitting in front of it. Yes, yes, you did. Disclaimer. Do as we say, not as we do. We're not trained professionals. We're idiots. Yes, we do. We're trained idiots, though. Trained idiots. Hence the name Crazy Carl. I thought it was Dr. Crazy Carl. Dr. Professor. Dr. Professor Crazy yeah, Carl. MD, PhD. in everything. DHS. He's the, no, we're not going to pull over and get directions type. And no, I have no problem getting directions. Whatever. That's not a thing anymore. I'm the one that still pulls over and gets directions instead of using the GPS. <clears throat> I'm the one who uses the GPS. <laughs> I'm the one that actually stops. How do you get here? <laughs> I'm the one and then realize that nobody knows anymore. You know, that's the funny thing. You go in some place, ask someone that lived there all their life how to get to something, and they give you a blank look because they don't know. Well, it's better than it used to be because used to be they'd tell you to go down two streets and 
take a left at the light. Okay. All right, what are you because doing? Because this is going to be counterintuitive, but if I can find, find my, uh, where's my Loctite? There. Are you going to loosen to tighten? Well, I'm putting both, it's going to have both, uh, like I said, this is going to be the thing that's kind of screwy, because I'm putting both anti-seed and Loctite on these, there it is. Because where the two pieces meet, where the thread ends and thread goes into the caliper, it's prone to locking up. So it'll seize, even though these are these are smooth. You're showing me, not the people oh. here. Oh, so it's not on this, because this has no threading. But on this piece here, where you have this end here, where the end of that screw goes in, that's where they lock up. So I'll put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the end of these and then thread tight on the bolt, which actually also, it not only keeps it from backing out, but it also helps keep it from uh, locking up. But you can see where corrosion formed on it. So I got to clean it up. It keeps the corrosion out of the threads, you're saying? Yeah, it kind of helps keep the corrosion out of the threads. Okay, cool. Well, I am moving the camera position again. Now I'm a doodle. Think of a Bobby. Think of a jig. Think of a doodger. Think of a doodger. That's a new one. What I always say. Just think of a doodger. A doozle wops it. Now I need the brush. Nope, I need the metal one. I thought that was the black iron one. It's not. Is this one? That's brass will work. There's a steel one somewhere, but who knows where it is. Nothing exciting. Well, that's what we do on this show. We beat and reuse parts that shouldn't be beaten and reused <laughs> and make them work. Well, these bolts are still in good shape. It's just you know, 25 years of Loctite. Yeah. Because cool. it's things you do, you should use Loctite to help keep it from backing out because this is a vibration part. It also. Loctite holds the bolt, but it also helps keep the bolt from rusting in place. So, True. unless you use, just don't use red Loctite unless you never want that bolt to ever come out again. Or you work in a Fiat factory making Jeep Renegades, apparently. Well, their plan is everything, you know, it's Fiat. 60,000 miles, you throw it away. You shouldn't have changed the brake until after 60,000 miles. They never planned on you getting extra brakes. Who's going to keep one long enough to replace the brakes? Well, at least they used plenty of grease putting these together because there's all kinds of grease, grease seeping out of everything they did. So this is well greased. Now it's back to doing this. Hopefully you can see stuff. Cameraman has gone to cook. Lock tight on the other end of it. Editor's notes. The director has left us. We have no hope. <laughs> I say kind of climate control. <sighs> so you got the brake line off, the soft line off, without stripping up the hard line. Yep. Right? good the uh the bolt isn't exactly a 12 anymore 12 millimeter but it still works with a 12 millimeter it's like a 11.8 it, it's like 11.8 and uh 12.2 i like your elegant brake fluid solution that brake line looks better than the old one yeah and it's got a little rubber thing, a plastic thing of a doodle around it. Yeah, the only thing it's not as good, potentially, is it's stainless instead of brass. I Meaning will. that the ends will probably go bad before the line does this time, hopefully, but... Oh, uh, whatever. Then it can just crumble off. <laughs> By that time, I'll probably be at the point of uh, either doing a full resto or putting different brakes on it. Oh, you know what? I got these lined up. You know what I got to do with this now? 
Right. Put the pads in. And here's the easy part of doing disc brakes. It's easy part, sure. We'll call it easy part. And now I gotta take this back off from the caliper. I've got the rotor on. There, finally got that pad back in there. Inside pads, aggravating because they sit on a single piston. And if you bump it, it gets out of alignment. So. Wait, the caliper you were looking at yesterday was for the Sportage, yep, right? Yep, yep. So the Sportage has nice... Big ones on the front. Two piston... Wow, that's... No, it was a single piston. It is single piston. What's on the box, that is not the right picture. And that box is way too big for that caliper. But that was the box they put in it, and they put a sticker oh. over the sticker. So... They put a sticker over the original sticker that was on the box. Come so on, like, Jeffers. Not a sponsor. Uh, that was Car Quest, which is funny. One caliper, that side caliper is one brand, and the other side's another brand. Because they can't get the same brand anymore. Car parts right now are kind of screwy. There we go. Maybe. Maybe. Do I need to move my foot? No. Whoop. Just push that bolt in to catch the holes for the bolt. And there you go. <laughs> and I've, I've replaced the caliper and the rotor for the third time myself on this vehicle. And I've had someone else do it three times. So this is the sixth rotor set, rotor and set, oh. Let's see. Fourth rotor, third caliper, fourth caliper. Fourth rotor, fourth caliper, and seventh set of pads on this one wheel since I've owned this car.